Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips. This is episode number 11. Of course, this is my weekly series where I expose the false prophets and the false teachers, the storytellers, who are biblically unsound. So I've got some nuggets picked out for you today. Uh, a couple of extras in there. Some people asked me to check in on some, so I'm going to be reviewing a couple more than usual. But hopefully it won't go too long. But if it does, stay with me. Here we go. How many have questions as to why I do this? Well, it's biblical. And let me show you. In Ephesians chapter 5, if you read verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Look at this right here, this word reprove. Now, the Greek word for a, that word right there, reprove, is elenko. And look what it means to convict, refute, confute, generally with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted by conviction to bring to the light, to expose. So we want to make sure that we're exposing these lies. And I would certainly say for everyone that I'm reviewing tonight, absolutely pray for them. But we will expose them because they are shipwrecking the faith of millions. Now, the first person that we're going to review tonight is Lori Ditto. This is a video that I'm going to be showing you some clips from. Who is Lori Ditto? Well, you can find her book on Amazon. And if we just read a little bit right in here, uh, she says God, well, the description says God gave Laura Ditto terrifying firsthand vision of hell. So she says that she's been to hell. Uh, she details that event in her book, The Hell Conspiracy. So she's got another one. Uh, it continues, but this vision was followed by an equally overwhelming experience, a tangible encounter with the glories of heaven. Through these 15 visions, heaven will draw you deep into the heart of God to experience exhilarating glories. Encountering heaven is an invitation to see heaven for yourself. So she claims that she's been to heaven, and that's what she's going to be talking about today. And I'll leave it up to you to determine whether she's been to heaven or not. I know our Bible says she has not. And I think after you hear these clips, you'll more than likely agree that she is being deceitful. He said, Lori, look. And I looked over there in this beautiful castle with rocks that are alive. And there was a room filled with presents. I mean like a billion presents. All of them wrapped with fancy little tags and great wrapping paper and stuff. And he said, all those gifts are yours. Oh, I told you I'm his favorite. So that's a good incentive, right, to want to go to heaven because there's billions of presents there for you and with really cool wrapping paper. That's your incentive, not the glory of Jesus Christ. And again, as you continue to listen, there's no reverence for Jesus Christ. It's foolishness. But what they do is they take earthly things and they say this is what's in heaven, only they magnify it, you know, to a much larger scale. But she wants you to get excited because there's billions of presents up there waiting for you, as she said there were for her. It's just silly. Second time than the first time, and when I looked up, he was smiling. He's smiling. You know, when God smiles at you, it makes you happy. It's like, oh, what's happening? He said, look, and he went like this, and his body turned into like a movie theater. And I watched him in all of his beauty. He was doing this special little dance. He cupped his hand like this. And he did this special little just circle dance with this bride of his. And I watched him dance with her. And they had it perfect. She was really good at this. She had this long, blonde, curly hair. She was barefoot. She just kept dancing. I wanted to play this clip. And you might disagree with me, but I see this, I hear this a lot when it comes to these storytelling, narcissistic, false visionaries, these false prophets. In this clip, she had Jesus dancing for her. And, and I find that happening frequently. Usually it 
you'd think it would be the creation dancing for Jesus. I mean, so many of us who long for Jesus Christ and his kingdom, we think about things like this. You know, what will we do? Many will worship Jesus and dance before him. But here she's got Jesus dancing for her. Why? Well, because she is just that darn awesome. And so you'll hear this a lot, and it's very sad. He knows. He's not looking for you to get your theology all right. But I came out of that vision. I was delivered of... Now, this is both extraordinary and very revealing. We see this more and more. These dreamers, these false prophets, these storytellers, they'll always tell you what they're doing. In this case, she's telling this crowd and the thousands who watch this on the Internet that Jesus Christ himself does not care if you have your theology correct. And what does that mean? Well, what that does is, it'll, it, at least in her mind, it'll shut down the naysayers. Those of you, those of us who are biblically sound, we adhere to the word of God. Here she has the king of kings saying, well, that's just not important. Don't cling to your doctrine, your theology. Just listen to what I'm saying and believe my lies. And if you do try to come at me with theology, well, Jesus told me it wasn't important, so you guys should not hold the word of God in that high of esteem. You shouldn't esteem it that high. What's more important is fantasy stories like what this woman is telling you. And I have been to heaven many different times. So God has a lot of family time. So you're going to do picnics, parades, you're going to go to the amusement park, you're going to just hang out with your family. And I'm not talking about just you, your kids, I'm talking about your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents, all those cousins, all those aunts and uncles. And then God's going to just keep expanding it until you back all the way up to Adam and Eve, and then, well, then we're all family, aren't we? So kind of troubling. Uh, sounds like she's taken a couple of pages out of Kat Kerr's book. Picnics in amusement parks. What are there in amusement parks? Well, there's roller coasters, right? So same type of nonsense. But then she kind of made a blanket statement telling the listener that all oh, your uncles and aunts, grandparents, whatever, cousins, they're all going to be there. She doesn't know this. You know, the Bible tells us that uh, the majority will go to hell. But here she's just saying everyone's going to be there and it's going to be all family time again. And that's not biblically sound. It's really a, a terrible thing to say. Um, but while I was in heaven this time and all the people were dressed up in all of their like wedding banquet clothes. I'm looking around at these people. I'm like, why are you dressed? Why are you dressed? And I looked down, I was dressed too. I'm like, it's not time for this. Is it time for this? I don't think it's time for this. But the who's who were there. I'm talking about the ones in the body of Christ. The who's who were there. And so they were dressed, and I was like, well, I've arrived. I'm standing here hobnobbing with the who's who. All right, that statement is just, again, reveals to you that this woman has not been in heaven. For her to say something like that is so very worldly. There's not a being in heaven who will think that they are hobnobbing with the who's who. That's what happens here on earth. In heaven, there is no vanity or selfishness or ego. There is holiness and reverence to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and God the Father, and everything will be splendor. These are the thoughts of a worldly person, but it makes for great storytelling, right? And all of a sudden, I saw Jesus. He had a backpack on. And he was not dressed up. He had a backpack. 
Now, this is the part of the video where the wolf in sheep's clothing degrades Jesus Christ. It happens all the time. Everybody's in their dress clothes, including her. But here comes Jesus in a backpack, like a 13-year-old kid would wear. And believe me, this is intentional. It's by design. Because people like this woman are ministers of Satan in disguise. So they have to, and they will blaspheme Jesus Christ in order to belittle him, to degrade him, to make him look silly, or just like some average Joe who is some, he's a little bit different. He's not to be revered. He, he wears a backpack. And for her to sit up in front of thousands and do this proves that she has no actual fear of the living God. Well, she will not get away with this forever. When you think of what Jesus Christ did for us in suffering terribly, enduring agony and anguish through crucifixion, and raising from the dead into glory, set high and above all principality and power, but she's got him running around in a backpack. This is blasphemy. Unbelievable. And I pause because it's so shocking, but it's not. And if you don't believe me, even after that clip, listen to the rest of this nonsense. And he says, do you want one? Want what? A backpack. I'm looking around. Yeah. I don't know what's the matter with these guys. Why they don't have a backpack, but then he's like, you got to get treasures. You got to put the treasures in your backpack. So what do you want? I said, I want healing. Not just for myself, but for somebody else. I want the gift of healings. I want miracles. So, you know, there's nine gifts that God gives. You can get all those. I want your cell phone number, Jesus. I mean, come on, what would you ask him for? If you could ask him for something, what would you ask him for? Because you got to go get treasures. And so now we're, he had them like gems laying all over the place, little gold coins. And, you know, people would look down and I'm crawling around on the ground next to the who's who. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm looking for treasure. And some of them would help me. Uh, well, here, you know, they pick something off of the floor. Thank you. That makes my job that much easier. And I was running around with, a, there weren't very many other people, but they had their dress clothes on, crawling around, looking for backpacks, looking for treasures to put in their backpack. And Jesus was ducking under the tables with the long um, tablecloths. And he'd reach up there and he'd grab a drink and bring it down. He'd take a drink. He'd put the cup back up there empty. You wonder who does that at the parties, don't you? Again. The irreverence for our Holy Lord is, well, it's, that's one thing. But make no mistake, this is blasphemy. She's got Jesus hiding under tables, sneaking drinks, while she is crawling around looking for, what, Pokemon jewel treasures, stuffing him into her backpack. This is absolutely horrendous. All you got to do is have a backpack of all of the treasures. And then I noticed Jesus went through a mouse hole. Now, it was a big mouse hole. And he goes through the hole, and he comes back out, and he looks at me and goes, you want to come here? I was like, wow. My grandfather used to be a good storyteller. You know, I'm a good storyteller. My grandfather used to be a good storyteller. And there you go. They always tell you, don't they? She's a storyteller. The sad thing is, this unholy story that she is telling is both false and is shipwrecking the faith of many. I saw the Lord. He was sitting down there. I pop in to this 
football stadium, and there are three people who are demanding that their life, their, their issue, be fixed. The Lord looks up. He sees me. He turns to his head. He says to the angel something. In, in an instant, the angel is beside me. The angel says, the Lord wants to see you in his private chamber. I said, no. No. And the angel looked at me. I told you last night that angels look at us. They, they can't believe that we would ever disobey. Now, what's happening here in the midst of her fake fantasy, lying, heaven visit story, is that she stumbled into a stadium, apparently, where Jesus was holding court. She says Jesus sent the angel over to tell her that the Lord wants to see you in his private chambers. And yes, it's, it's all so silly, isn't it? But the fact that she thinks, even for a second, that any person who actually was face-to-face -face with Jesus would tell him no is very revealing also because it would never happen. This isn't the case of an earthly daughter being rebellious to her, you know, earthly dad. She's saying that she would dare tell the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings no face to face. And again, we know the story's fake. But this would never happen because we can read even in the accounts of Ezekiel, Isaiah, when one comes face to face with God or even into the actual presence of God, you're pretty much falling on the ground as dead right before you soil yourself in trembling and fear. This is just so disheartening. It is so utterly absurd in how these people, no one in the audience apparently, is up to speed on biblical doctrine, and it's very sad. Had I been there, I would have risen from my seat and called her out publicly. This is so utterly blasphemous. Lord, look at us, your favorite ones. You know our beginning from our end, God. You're not upset when we don't understand everything exactly right. You're not going to kick us out because our theology isn't right. So again, as she closes, she throws that in there again. Oh, God, we know you're not going to kick us out if we don't get theology correct. Because, you know, theology is just not important. Again, trying to or successfully disarming the listener. Theology is just not that important. So according to Lori Ditto, Catholics, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, that doesn't matter. Everybody's getting into heaven. Theology just isn't important. doesn't matter if you get it right. That's the way they like it. Because what that ensures Miss Ditto here is that she's going to be able to continue to travel the world to different venues and tell her fake fantasy stories and continue to get paid. That's what this is all about. Don't listen to the Bible, she says. Just pay attention to my stories. This is the real deal. And sadly, it works. So as I said in the beginning, certainly pray for this woman. Pray that she will repent and come to the truth of Jesus Christ. But until she does, read your Bible and stay away from her. All right, next we're going to look at a guy named Edward Umling. He's got a pretty good sub base. You can see he's got almost 9,000 subs. That means he's got a good reach to deceive. So the only thing that I'm going to determine today is whether he is a true prophet or a false prophet. So we're going to listen to some clips, and you can help me as we determine this. This month ends with disaster on both coasts. It's a month of unleashing, a month of change, a month of destruction, the month of the beginning of the end, says the Lord. All right, well, there you go. Okay, you heard what he said. Um, well, right up front, you can see the different type of delivery 
that Edward has compared to the rest of the false prophet storytellers. A little bit different. Very authoritative, direct, stern. Actually, uh, actually got kind of scared listening to him. Kind of glad he's not my dad. Seems like he'd be the type who'd give you a good belt whipping if you found spots on the dishes. But okay, let's take a look at what he said in this prophetic word. He said that this month, month of March, disaster on both coasts, East Coast, West Coast. He said this would be a month of unleashing. Be a month of change, a month of destruction. He said it'd be a month, which would be the beginning of the end. And then he capped it all off with that inevitable blasphemous cherry on top when he said, saith the Lord. All right, so if we scroll down, he made this video on March 17th. Today is the 31st of March. Technically, he's got the rest of this day for this prophecy to be fulfilled. But I'm going to go ahead and say, nope, it's not going to happen. Why? Because he's a false prophet. Let's look at some of his other previous clips. Here's a video that he did entitled December. You scroll down. He made this prophecy video on December 4th of 2020. In this, well, I guess it's about a minute long, he's reading you several different prophecies as it pertains to that month, December of 2020. Listen to what he says. December 2nd. Brace yourself, child. December, there will be a shaking of immense proportions. Once, twice, third time. On the third, not the first, not the second, but third, surprises, unforeseen events, challenges awaits this people. Warn my people, warn my people, says the Lord. Challenges, challenges, many challenges, says the Lord. November 3rd, my son, this will be the last election. This king will come down. This will allow my fiery ones to come forth. December will be a catastrophe so big, the people will be in shock and disbelief. September the 5th. My son, hear the word of the Lord. December is the month I change the land. December is the month I move this land. December is the time I visit calamity. Say it again, December, 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 says the Lord. July 19th. Mark your calendar. December 25th in America will be unrecognizable. The very words to the songs they sing shall be words of lamentation and weeping. November the 29th. December. Sorrow replaces gladness. Confusion replaces order. Division replaces peace. Reason replaces faith. So again, wow, right? Just filled with authority as he delivers this. You're just shaking in your boots. Here's what he said. As this was all supposed to happen in December of 2020, he said all kinds of changes. He said there was going to be a catastrophe so big that the people would be in shock and disbelief. Changes in the land, he said. By December 25th, the United States would be unrecognizable. And he said, lamentation and weeping. The lamentation of the women. The lamentation of the women. Right? So, none of this happened. None of this happened. This was all just a show. It's very sad. Another point I'll make is when these cowards come out and they try to act like such prophetic tough guys, right? The Lord's speaking through me. You better listen to me. Look, his comments are turned off. You know why they do that? Well, because they're cowards. They don't want to receive correction. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. And the fact that he got this wrong doesn't even phase him. So, very, very sad. But we've got one more clip to watch. Next month, banks will begin to shudder. By October, 
a new currency introduction will be planned. In November, there shall be wailing in the streets of your city. December will be a month of devastation. I have departed from this people. So that was from a video called, I have departed from this people, saith the Lord, says the Lord. He did this on July of 2020. He said that by next month, which means that would have been August, that the banks were going to begin to shudder. And then he eventually said there would be a new currency starting. By November, there was going to be wailing in the streets. I think this may have been when Dana Coverstone was doing all that stuff. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I can't keep track of all these false prophets. Uh, and then, of course, he said, again, by December, there would be devastation. Did any of that happen? And the answer is no. And again, his comments are turned off. So proving that he does not receive biblical correction and that he just doesn't care because he has continued. And as far as I know, because these videos are still up, He's never repented. He's never apologized for blaspheming and literally lying in the name of Jesus Christ. And it's just sad. You know, I don't understand why he just doesn't preach the gospel. But that's what narcissists, well, they, they don't do that. What narcissists do is they want to hold themselves up as these great ones. You know, they think they're actual prophets. And again, the fact that he won't repent only speaks to confirm that he does not fear our living God. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up, a couple of people had asked me about this channel, You Be Ready. You Be Ready. And so what this gentleman does is he puts, uh, he doesn't put his face up there. He just uh, films his Bible. But the first uh, clip we're going to listen to is from this uh, video, which was made on May 20th of 2022. You can see the title, Surprise Attack. So let's have a listen. This is the word the Lord gave me. My son, warn my sleeping body of the surprise attack that will come in the months ahead. It will not be expected, yet my body has been warned. My body continues to ignore my warnings and continues to promote a man they think will save them. Just as the surprise attack at Pearl Harbor was known but ignored, so will this attack completely catch Mystery Babylon by surprise. All right, so some controversy. Depending on what your definition is of a couple months, this was made 10 months ago. For crying out loud, it was made last year. We're not even in the same year. So I know there's going to be many that, well, months could, a couple months could, you know, be 10 months. No. I would absolutely not agree. It would have made more sense if the prophecy would have said an attack is coming next year in 2023. He didn't say that. He said a couple of months. We're all adults here, right? The other part of that prophecy, which was disturbing, was that he compared this alleged attack to Pearl Harbor in scale. Make no mistake, that's what he did. So I would definitely conclude this as a false prophecy. This nation will burn with fire and in the coming months be so hot that many will not stand. The enemy of the north will come down like a locust and devour everything in his path. Only those whom I have chosen will be protected during this times of rage. All right, so that clip you just heard was from this video, Prophecy Times of Rage. This also was made 10 months ago on May 20th. What he said was that this nation will burn with fire in the coming months. So same thing. He said it'll be so hot, many won't stand. Then he said the enemy of the north will come down like locusts and devour everything. Did any of that happen? No, we don't, we don't need to even expand on this. It's ridiculous. It's another false prophecy. And this is the word that he gave me. My son, hear my voice as I tell you that this summer will be the hottest on records. Crops will fail because of excessive heat. 
the sun will be three times hotter, and many will say climate control is the cause. But I say it is my judgment on the world. So that was a clip. You can see the title, Prophecy, Three Times Hotter. And this was also made uh, 10 months ago in that same dreadful month. May of 22 was not good for Mr. UB40, UB Ready. But in that alleged prophecy, he said that the summer of 22 was supposed to be the hottest on record. Now, I checked. It was not the hottest summer on record. He also said that the crops would fail because of excessive heat. That didn't happen. And then this is just bewildering. He said the sun would be three times hotter. Now, <laughs> I'm no physicist, guys. I'm no scientist, but I'm pretty sure that if the sun were three times hotter, pretty much all the inner planets, including Earth, would have been burnt up pretty bad. So just what folly this man has wrought with his false prophecies. There is no question this man is a false prophet. You know, and if you look at his sub count there, 9,000, that's a pretty good reach. He's deceiving in the thousands. And no repentance, doesn't care, no fear of the living God. These videos are still up. You can still go watch them. He just keeps on keeping on. No fear of God. It's so it's so very sad. So we're going to conclude with you be you be ready. I keep wanting to say you be forty. Red red wine. Anyway, we'll move on to the next one and the final one. This one is a doozy. All right. Next up, we've got Bobby Connor, and he is telling you a story today about when Jesus personally visited him. And it's about six minutes long. As he starts the story, the audio kind of cuts out at the beginning, but as he starts the story, he's just asking the church, you want to hear this story about when Jesus visited me? And, of course, they all clap and cheer because it seems Bobby here is a storyteller. So we're going to critique this, and we'll comment as we go. When Jesus came to my house? Yes. All right, this is absolutely true. 1990-something, uh, a man asked my wife, said, do you think if I built a cabin here in Moravian Falls, Bobby would come? She said, I don't know, you'll have to ask Bobby. So this man came and asked, we said, Bobby, if I build a cabin here, uh, will you come and stay some? I said, I don't know, I'll have to ask Jesus. So I asked Jesus, if he, and he said yes. So I told the man, yes. They built a cabin. Tens of thousands of people have seen this cabin because of what I'm going to tell you about it. They built a cabin, a nice little cabin up in the woods. Wasn't any houses built there on this property then. Matter of fact, when the man was going to buy the property, he brought me and my wife onto that property. He said, now, we're going to ask God for a, a sign to see if this is what we're supposed to build. So we're there, and I see an angel jump from one tree to another, and then he hid himself in that tree. Now, you can clearly hear that Bobby's got the talent for storytelling. He's got that very smooth southern delivery. You know, I just asked Jesus. I said, Jesus, is it, you know, is it all right? Can you clear your schedule and come on up to the cabin? He said, sure. No problem. I will be there. I'm going to pencil you in right now. So I said, great. So we went up to the cabin. First thing I saw was a little angel up there. He was playing hide and go seek. He was hiding. Look at that. Yep. I see angels everywhere. I speak to Jesus. I'm just that off. And you see, this is storytelling. And everyone out here, look at the size of this crowd. They're just all sitting there going, really? Did this really happen? He told you right at the beginning, hey, this is a true story. He wouldn't lie to you. So right off the bat, a lot of red flags here. So I said, I saw an angel jump from this tree to this tree, but now he won't show himself. So let's ask for a sign. So I said, Lord, give us a sign. When I said sign up the hill, up the side of the mountain, a wind comes. Trees are this big around. And the trees start bowing over like this, shaking just like this. R wind roared. The trees stood back up like that. The man said, you think that's a sign? <laughs> I go, that'll work till one comes. And isn't that something? The crowd laughs because this is entertainment. And it's going to get worse. But, you know, again, with his storytelling skills, he can make it seem legit. You know, Lord, I, I know that only an evil and an adulterous generation asked for a sign, but I'm going to ask you for a sign here at the cabin. 
And he goes on to tell tell you that, uh, you know, giant, apparently there must have been oak trees because he said, I mean, he gave you the size and all the uh, trees just bowed with this wind. So, yeah, just, again, storytelling. So that's where, right, right there where that happened is where he built the cabin. So they built a wonderful little cabin by this uh, portal. So the, we're, it's finally done, November. I'm going to dedicate it. My wife is in Texas. I'm there in Moravian Falls at this new cabin. There's the man that built the cabin. We're holding hands because we're dedicating the cabin. And I'm praying. Oh, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for this. You know, and in the middle of the prayer, right behind me are, is a stair going up to the second floor. You hear somebody walking up the stairs. Ain't nobody there but me and him. You can hear it as clear as a bell. Heavy footsteps going up the house. He squeezes my hands real hard. <laughs> he said, I got to go home, hadn't I? I said, yes, you do. So he leaves. He gets in his pickup truck, drives down a, a not even a road, a gravel thing where some trucks had been. So he drives off. I'm the only duck on the pond. I go back in the house. There's a fire crackling. It's November up in the mountains. So I sit down on the sofa. And I'm just sitting there, and I hear a noise out on the front porch. Nobody else is around there. We are in the secluded Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. So I thought, well, there's nobody supposed to be here. So I get out and open the door and step out on the porch. There's 14 to 18 angels on the porch, dressed exactly like the pilgrims. They have not had a, um, a commission till, since the 1700s. Their first question was, what took you so long? And anyway, so just the, being the mature man of God that I am, <laughs> I started playing with the angels. This is 94. This is when uh, Toronto was going on. So these angels, they were, you couldn't imagine. They were dressed just like pilgrims, and I'm playing with them. They could, they could jump off the porch, jump back on, they swinging in a porch, they could swing around a pole, and we're just out there having a time. You know, it never ceases to amaze me, the gullibility scale shoots up to 11 in this day and age. The people out there will just believe anything that's told to them. It's really amazing. And again, as this man tells his lying story, as he blasphemes God, and I said it before, I'll say it again, it's going to get worse. He tells us that all, all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. Well, lo and behold, I open the door, there's 14 to 18 angels out there. I'm not kidding. It's the truth. And they're all dressed like pilgrims. And lo and behold, there they are. They were dressed like pilgrims, just like I said. And they say, well, where are you been, Bobby? We've been here since the 1700s. We ain't had no commission. And I said, well, that's not my fault. Well, he said, well, get your little scrawny butt out here. We're going to start playing some games. So we just started hooting and hollering, running around, playing games. Some were playing hopscotch. We had some monkey bars. There was a tether ball. And Raphael had a volleyball net. So we just loved playing. We just started scrambling around, you know. It's just unbelievable. And this is what this man has convinced his audience that this happened. And well, I don't know, we stayed out there probably 45 minutes, something like that. And then this group got quiet and they're gone. That group got quiet and they're gone. I'm the only guy standing on the porch now. I thought, oh man. So I walked back in, sat down on the sofa, stoked up the fire a little. It's crackling and I'm beating myself up. I thought, how immature. How could I have been out there playing with those angels when I could have been inquiring and getting information? <laughs> then I'm sitting there. It's dark now. A knock came on the door a lot louder than that. My heart jumped all the way up in my throat like a little 16-year-old girl. I said, come in. <laughs> and a voice said, no, you must come out. I get up and my knees were weak. I walk to the front door of that cabin and I open the door. There stands Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Not a trance, not a vision, more real than me standing right here before you standing there on my front porch in this cabin with a bottle in his hand, looked just like a champagne bottle. And he said to me, we're going to have a christening service, but you don't know anything about christening. He walked right by me just like this and didn't stop where the fireplace was cracking. He walked down the hallway, turned back to the right where the bedroom was. I'm following him. Just never forget when these frauds tell of their fake encounters with Jesus. Never forget the absolute display of irreverence. There is no fear before this man. He speaks of Jesus as though Jesus was, you know, kind of a, a hard-nosed manager. You know, uh-oh, better get up. We know who that is. And then Jesus walks in with a bottle. 
This man doesn't collapse before him as a dead man being in the presence of God. He doesn't kneel before him, shows no reverence. He just follows him down the hall because Jesus apparently is going somewhere. It's just always so telling. And it's so hurtful to watch these devils just lie about Jesus and degrade Jesus. It is just so hurtful. And he took the bottle and went wham and hit the wall in this cabin. Bottle shatters. An oily substance is running out down the wall just like this. I didn't say it. I thought it. I thought, oh my. How am I going to explain to the man that built this cabin the first night his wall's destroyed? I didn't say it. I thought it. You know, the Bible said he knows our thoughts are far off. The moment I thought it, Jesus looked at me and said, you never have to apologize or attempt to explain what I do. Look. So I looked at the wall and all that was running down had made a perfect map of the world. Like a war room map. All the continents, all the nations. And the Lord spent hours touching a place and would light up, touching another place, touching another place. When he touched it, it would light up. He said, you can only target what I target or you'll become a target. It lasted for hours. Now here's what I'm going to tell you. Every so that's pretty much where the story ends. So deeply offensive, goofy, absolutely. Here's a man, and there's so many like him, where they have the pulpit and they have the choice to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in the gospel with all the word of God which edifies the body of Christ, but they don't do that. Instead, they storytell fantasy, fake stories which neither edify the body of Christ nor help their faith. What will the people take home after hearing this? Well, just his story. They've learned to fantasize, and they're certainly proved that they're gullible. But it doesn't help your faith at all. So, you know, it's very, very sad. What he also does, people like him, him and people like him, they degrade Jesus Christ to, to some grumpy dude. He also degraded the angels as though they were just kind of slow-minded children who love to just run around and play. It's just pathetic. It, it just really uh, gives me righteous anger. And so that's, again, the reason that I expose this. If you want a real and true example of what it means to be in the presence of our Lord, Go to Revelation chapter 4. We can scroll down. And I want to read this to you, starting in verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure were they are and were created. Again, just one example of a true encounter, which we find in our Holy Scripture. And the whole Bible is filled with the holiness and the reverence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then to hear uh, other people just degrade that is with their silliness is just, again, very offsetting and very troubling. So certainly pray for this man. You know, pray that he'll come to the truth of Jesus Christ because it is everything. Jesus Christ is our treasure and he is holy. And this man needs to know that. So again, pray for him that he would repent of this nonsense. You know, it's bad enough that he does it, but think of the thousands, maybe more, who are learning from him falsely that Jesus Christ is, you know, no big deal. That he's just the dude that can show up at your house and knock on your door. And then, you know, bring a bottle of champagne in or whatever he said. And it's just so degrading. So pray for this guy. Pray for those that heard this nonsense that they would not be, you know, deceived.
All right, so that's going to do it for this episode of Friday Fruit Clips. I sure do appreciate you watching. Always pray for these false prophets, these false teachers, that they will come to the truth of Jesus Christ. But until they do, I will continue to expose them. I care about my brothers and sisters. I don't want them in delusion, so I'm going to do my part to stand in opposition of those who make their livings lying in the name of Jesus Christ. So until next time, God bless. We'll talk to you soon.